If You Come to Earth by Sophie Blackall Dear Visitor from Outer Space, If you come to Earth, here's what you need to know. You can find us near a big sun and a tiny moon and a bunch of other planets. Ours is the greeny blue one. The green and brown bits are land and the blue stuff is water. People mostly live on the land in big cities and small towns and tiny villages or just in the middle of nowhere. We live in all kinds of homes. in all kinds of families. There are more than seven billion people on earth. We all have bodies, but everybody is different. Except for my friends who are identical twins and look the same, except for Mustafa's Mo. Inside our heads, we are usually thinking. You can't see our thoughts. But sometimes we show our feelings on our faces. Even if we don't feel like it, we get dressed every day. We wear different clothes depending on what we do and where we live and if it's hot or cold. There's lots of different weather in the world. Some of it's good and some of it's bad. Wherever people live, we usually have to go someplace else. There are lots of ways to get there. I'm a kid and kids go to school to learn stuff. So we'll know what to do when we're grown up. Grown ups do lots of things to make the world work. But when people are not at work or at school or sick or asleep, we get to do whatever we want. Whatever we are doing, we need to eat when we are hungry. Some of us have more food than others. We all need food and water to survive. We get water from the rain, which flows into little streams and big rivers and all the way to the sea. You can't drink the sea because it's too salty. The sea looks empty. But actually, it's full. Fish can swim, but they can't walk. Most animals can walk or swim or gallop or hop, but they can't fly. Some birds can swim and walk and fly. So if I had to choose, I'd be a bird. Birds can sing. So can whales and people. 
People make all kinds of music on our own and all together. Some of us who are deaf talk with our hands and faces. Some of us who are blind read with our fingers. If we are blind, we can imagine colors as shapes and sounds. These are the colors you need to paint everything in the world. Some things are part of nature. Some things are made by people. Some things are big. Some are small. Some things are invisible. Some germs can make you sick. So can eating a woolly milk cap toad soul, or breathing in smoke, or getting spat on by a slow loris. Sometimes people get hurt by accident. Sometimes we hurt each other. It's better when we help each other. Babies are not very good at anything. Kids are good at lots of things. Grown-ups can do just about anything until they are really, really old. But by then, the babies are grown up and can help. Older people are good at telling stories about the world when they were young. Kids are good at making up stories that haven't happened yet. There are lots of things we don't know. We don't know where we were before we were born or where we go when we die. But right this minute, we are here together on this beautiful planet. If you come to Earth, you can stay in my room. P.S. How many eyes do you have? Are you big or small? Do you have any pets? When is your birthday? Is it always dark where you are? Are you going to visit us? My friends and I want to know. The idea for this book arrived on top of a Himalayan mountain in Bhutan. I was working with Save the Children and had climbed a zigzagging path to reach a tiny two-room school with 10 students. We couldn't understand a word each other said, but the children drew pictures for me and shared their lunch, and I showed them some books. I have made books about boars and babies and bears and lighthouses, but what I wanted in that moment was a book that would bring us together. A book about their home and mine. I wished for the same book when I was with children in Rwanda and Democratic Republic of the Congo, in India and Singapore, and in Brooklyn, New York. And so I decided I would make such a book, but I was going to need lots of help. I talked to children all over the world and spent time at the Brooklyn New School where I made 23 new friends who gave me lots of ideas about how to explain our world to someone from outer space. Those children, Ava, Alex, Ari, Athena, Bernadette, Calum, Carolina, Denbel, Erin, Finn, Goriana, Gus, Ida, Iris, Karen, Lucia, Margo, Mia, Maxi, Niall, Noon, Tehomara, and Willa are the students in the classroom image in this book, along with their teacher, Miss Greta. I am grateful to them for their thoughtful, hilarious ideas. I told them making a book takes a while, 
I didn't expect it to take five years. As the idea for the book took shape, I knew there needed to be one kid writing the letter. I'd met thousands of smart, endearing children. How could I possibly choose only one to be our narrator? Then I met Quinn. Quinn has lived in Nigeria and Indonesia and Nepal, but when we met, he and his family were living in Australia. Quinn's brother, Elliot, was busy with the lizard, so I asked Quinn all the questions, ending with, what kind of snack would you give a visitor from another planet? Mashed potatoes, he said without hesitation, because we don't know if they have teeth. And then he slid over 17 drawings he made on flashcards while we were talking of different planets and their possible inhabitants. I had my kid. There were nearly 8 billion people on Earth. I can only fit a small number into this book. Some are my friends and neighbors. Some are families I saw picnicking in Central Park. Some I met at a market in Yangon, on a bus in Beijing, on a boat in Sydney, in a cow stall on a dairy farm in Hobart, New York. Almost everyone in this book is based on a real person. Some of them, like a few in the pages about things grown up do, are people you might recognize. We humans define ourselves by where we were born, where we live, what we believe, by the clothes we wear, and the languages we speak. But there is no typical person. We are all different. Yet there is something we all share, the planet on which we live. This world of ice-capped mountains and sandy deserts and grassy plains, of winding rivers and glacial lakes and glittering seas, of bustling cities and busy music and every ant and every sneeze and every comma, every atom of every living and non-living thing. This planet that carries all that we hold dear orbits the sun in our solar system. The sun is a star, and it's one of billions of stars in our galaxy which we call the Milky Way. The Milky Way is one of billions of galaxies in the known universe. Astronomers estimate there may be billions of other planets, a bit like Earth, where life forms could exist. There are lots of things I don't know. I don't know if there is life elsewhere in the universe, though I find it hard to believe we are alone. But I do know this. Right this minute, we are all here together on this beautiful planet. It's the only one we have, so we should take care of it and each other, don't you think? Sophie Blackall. The End.